So, my wife had a bit of an accident with her phone today. She dropped it face down. Twice. The second time, it didn't bounce quite so well as it did the first time. It's got a big crack right across the screen right here. And this is in an Autobox case. It didn't quite manage to survive this one. It survived plenty of other drops. Not this time because it obviously hit on the hard plastic here. And there's not really much protection on the front part. The back and sides, there's heaps of protection. On the front, not so much because it's straight into the plastic. Pretty much a direct impact, which is a shame. Anyway, I'm going to pull this thing apart, replace the screen. So if you want to see how a screen is replaced, stick around. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if it's your first time here, or if you're interested in electronic repairs or things like that. So the first thing I'll do is get this thing out of the case. Now, there is some glass particles in between the film here on the front and the actual screen, so it's, it is fractured quite badly. Right, let's set the rubber surround. Now, I've got to get that plastic surround. Just to make sure I clean off all the glass fragments off this, otherwise they'll be problematic later on. So, this is a phone which I repaired a while ago. I actually picked this phone up as a broken phone and I was able to repair it. So, it's not original screen or something. I can't actually what the situation was now. Is it on there? There you go. It's actually got a pretty bad step in it just here. This shifts it off quite a bit. So, pinch load screwdriver. Need a suction cup. Also, have a like a splitting suction cup. You can just stick it on both sides, and you can just literally suck it up with that. I'm not going to use that today. I'm just going to use that. Yeah, we go for metal spudger. What the hell? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> there you go. Come on. It's starting to go. I'm trying to scratch this around at the same time. There you go. Now you've got to disconnect the battery and then disconnect the screen. Should I do the battery while I'm in here? She has complained about battery life. I'll replace the battery too. This be nice. Always disconnect the battery first. That way you don't short anything out and cause any damage. Now let's do the screen. Some of these screws go in certain places. You have to be a little bit careful about not mixing them up. If you put it in the wrong place, you can actually cause long screw damage. And you don't want that. You definitely don't want to cause long screw damage. Let's get my plastic spudger around here. It's a bit more gentle. Because there are components here, you could potentially rip them off the ball if you're not careful. Don't do that, do you? There we go. Now you've got to strip the screen, transfer the parts onto a new assembly, which I've got sitting just over here. Um, I've shown these mailbags a while ago, probably six months to a year ago. If you just do a search for iPhone screens on my channel, you probably see what well, iPhone screen replacement or something like that. I might even put links down below, maybe. But yeah, these are really cheap and reasonable quality. They've also got some bits already assembled in them, so it's quite nice. We should do the screen, and then I'll do the battery, and then we we'll go back a refurbished phone. Let's get this thing apart. So I make a note of these flexes, which which sequence are in. All right, so that long skinny one is folded down on on top. We got this one here, which is in the centre. Then the narrow one is on the bottom. All right, so that's the narrow one's a camera, the wider one's a screen. Let's remove the bezel or the reinforcement plate on the back. Okay, so that's that panel, let's take to one side. We have to do the home button here, got to take this off. So we've got home button flex here. So we've got to try and separate this carefully without damaging anything. Come on. Cooperate, here we go. Right. So I won't pull this out yet until I'm ready to transfer it. That's just ready to go. Now you've got to do the camera assembly. Now 
There's the bracket. Now this is kind of stuck down as well, so it should be. So we have the earpiece should just be a floating bit which is in here. So we'll just pop that out. Like that. Then you've got these flexes and stuff in here which you need to pull out as well. There we go, that thing there. Pop that over there. Okay. So this is now finished with. That's all we need apart from the home button. So here's our new assembly. So let's transfer the home button over. I do have some replacement adhesive surrounds for these buttons, but usually I find you can just transfer, if you're careful, we can just transfer the whole thing over and it's fine, don't have to do anything else. Um, but I do have replacement rubber surrounds for these buttons. Just gotta lift this up because it's stuck down. There we go. And pop that out. It's not stuck down very well. I think I need to replace that. Let me get a new rubber surround out. So here's a new home button gasket. I've also got the screen ceiling gasket here as well. And here's a replacement battery. We're ready to go. So I'll do the home button first. There's a bit of dust and stuff around here, so I'll try and get a wipe as well and clean up before I put the new gasket on it. But very be very careful about the flex. You don't want to damage the flex on this thing. That would be bad. Be right if Apple allowed us to, like, I don't know, not worry about the coding on the buttons, maybe, or something like that. But no, they're very fussy about stuff and they actually don't let us do things that we should be able to do, like just repairing devices properly using the proper tools and the proper equipment and information. But Apple don't like that because it costs them money. You know, well, they want us to fix our own devices when it could, you know, give them a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars or more these days to get a phone when you your phone breaks. You know, who needs that? So you go, I'll just fold that little inner piece here, which needs to get out of the way. And then you just put the button through the frame here, stick it down. And then we peel this off and we stick it into the phone here. To the main housing. And that should all be good. Once it all lines up properly, it's looking pretty good. So let's just rest it in place with tweezers. So I'm not touching the adhesive with my fingers. These sorts of parts, like the actual surrounds and bits like that, are easy enough to get, but they're not Apple original parts. So I think these are all aftermarket things, so it's a bit of a trade off, really. But uh, that's down now. This protection film on here will be holding the button in a little bit, so it won't be perfect until I actually get it all fully assembled. Okay, so that's that bit. Now we can put this on in a second. We're just going to put the home button flex down into place. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. I have to say that every time. So it's down, it's lined up, push it down, put that down, fold this over, and very carefully get it aligned. Don't force it. There we go, that's popped in, I think. Yep, that's in there, okay. Right, so I peel this film here off. Let's put the home button cover on. Now we've got to put the camera assembly in, which is the, the bit which I find most fiddly. It's always the hardest bit to get right, because it's sort of juggling all these different bits around. And also my hands will tend to get in the way, so it's going to be really hard for the camera to see what I'm doing. So we've got this earpiece, so this has already got that piece built into the screen, so maybe I will peel that off and replace it with a new one, because it's got a new one already built into the screen. That mesh that's in there, 
So that's the original old one, which can potentially be a bit dirty and stuff, so let's just get rid of that. Got to be careful about damaging the flexors. Just try and slide underneath it. There we go. So here's the replacement one. I'm going to peel the adhesive film off there. Then we have to locate this in place. Anyway, we get this in first. Get the speaker bit in. Which I know you can't probably see. These are some rubbishy old tweezers, but they're good for levering on things and getting into little awkward spots. Okay, that's in place. So that's the earphone. Now it's got to bend the rest of it down with the earpiece part in there. Let's be here. It's a little bit dirty in here, I think. Yeah, some scunge on there. Let's clean this off. Better, let's clean now. So this needs to be folded down, get the light sensors and bits in place, drop the earpiece piece, the earpiece piece in, <laughs> the earpiece section, drop that in, fold that down, because it's got to make contact with the bits on that flex there. Pop the camera in like that. I've got to get the bracket over the top. And aligned with the flex properly as well. So I say this whole thing's rather fiddly. It's like the worst bit of doing the whole process is trying to get this bit all back in where it's supposed to go and all lined up and stuff. So now we've got to get the screws. Let's go for the middle one. Can't pick up the screwdriver, so let's do it by hand. All right. Get that in place and wiggle it around as I'm screwing down. Just to help it bed down. Let's have a look, make sure it looks like it's going correctly. Yep, the little plastic posts are coming through, so that's exactly right. So I'll put the rest of the screws in that, I'll come back. Alright, let's fit all the screen stuff on. It's always a bit of a fiddly thing. This is just to test it and make sure it's okay. Once we're sure it works, then we'll pull it apart again. There you go. The battery up and power it up, make sure the screen works. Then we shall replace the battery, retest it again. All right, screen's actually turning on at least. That's a good start. All right, test the buttons. That seems fine. Touch is working fine. So now I need to replace this battery. Now, whilst we're complaining about being draining too quickly, I keep telling you because she's using Bluetooth because Bluetooth is sucking all the power out. Because she's using the COVID tracer app, it does Bluetooth tracing for nearby stuff and saying, well, that's what's causing it to drain. But she's saying, no, no, it's no good. So I'm going to put a new battery in it to her. All right, so put in a new battery. Um, she will hopefully see that actually it's not that. It's the Bluetooth. Got these tabs here. And I, I may need to put alcohol on this to help it come out. Sometimes you put alcohol on it, it can actually help soften the adhesive and make it easier to come out. Let's see, here we go. Well, it'll want it slide. Can you see what I'm doing, can you? No, not working today. Alcohol it is. So let's try the other technique. Put some alcohol in there. Now I'm just going to use my tweezers to try and wind this out. And we'll see if we can actually get it to comply or not. Patience pays off. Whilst we're just about there. There you go, that's one. That's where the alcohol really helps. See, it just softens it, the adhesive and makes it a lot easier to get it out. Works quite well. And the old tweezer technique is also a good little cheat. It also works rather well. Takes stress off it. And this one should come a bit easier because the battery can now move a little bit. So this one I can probably pull a bit harder. 
and it's out. Now I know I replaced this battery, I actually only put one strip on because I think that's actually enough anyway. One strip seems to hold them just fine, I think two's a bit of overkill. Alright, let's put a new one in. So annoyingly, I seem to have run out of those double-sided strips that go on the batteries. So what I'm going to have to do is use some double-sided tape. So I'll just put a couple of spits like that. So they'll be nowhere near any of these flexes or all that. So when it comes to getting the battery back out again, you can just be leave it out carefully, a bit of a, you know, IPA and stuff like that, um, without damaging flexes or anything like that. I've just made sure that they're positioned away from anything fragile, all right? Because it's going to be harder to get this out next time potentially. All right, so that's the reason I've done that. Don't like to bodge it in that way, but I don't know how I missed buying more, but I did. Well, I'll get the battery and then I'll put the bezel around the outside there. I still got a bit from the previous time that needs cleaning off and redoing. I think at the time I didn't have the actual bezels for it, so the actual gasket that goes around the outside. I didn't have those at the time. Now I do have them, so now I can do them properly. Just make sure this is going to line up. It also needs to be bent around a little bit to make it fit carefully so I don't crease it too much. So that will go in now I think. Because it's new it's not been shaped yet. Alright, I've cleaned all this edge up now so let's just install the new gasket. It's also a bit fiddly but you know that's just the way it is. quite important because it helps to hold the screen on so you know if you get in there the better if you can replace it then do otherwise just leave on the original stuff and hopefully it will last you might get lucky you may or may not get lucky what I do tend to find is these only just fit really you know this is let's try peeling this up and see if it's gonna survive it there we go Made it. Now you can put the screen back on. Yay. Now oh, screen connected. I'll put this bracket down. Oh, getting stuck. Don't want to get stuck yet. This is where it gets tricky because you can't leave three hands on arms. Anyway, we'll start on one corner. Wish these flexes were just very slightly longer, you know. Normally I'd actually have a stand which I have the screen popped up with. I should probably do that, but this time I'm trying to do it without it. Okay, before I seal it down, I'm going to connect the battery up and make sure that's actually working before I put the connector cover on. See if it powers up alright. Yeah, it's powering up, so it must be okay. Right, I'll put the cover on. Okay, it's five percent. The battery's been sitting around for a while. That is a good charge up, but uh, see if it actually works. It's fine. I'll we'll try and push it into the top edge. Make sure it's pushed right down, and then that should just clip in. Yeah. The other way I do this, once it's actually lined up, is I'll just put it up the bench, push it down like this on the bench. That way you're not flexing the screen and it should all bed down nice and straight okay and once you've done that you can just give it a squeeze more doped target so that's done let's put these other two screws in and then I'll go and charge this phone up and it should hopefully behave after that done. Have you to like and subscribe if you found it interesting and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.